Hey guys, SharpG1 here again with another Roblox scripting tutorial. In this episode, I'll be showing you guys how to get keyboard input using a user input service. So I showed you guys how to get keyboard input a while back, but um, the way I showed you to do that is now deprecated, which means Roblox is eventually going to remove it, and it all uh, deprecated also means it's basically outdated too. So this uh, user input service is useful for a lot more things than just keyboard input. It, you can use it for now vo virtual reality headsets. Uh, you can use it for game remotes, I think, or I think it might be a different res uh, service. Um, you can also use it for mobile devices like touchscreen and things like that. So it's useful for a lot of things. And uh, I brought up the API for it here. And though, see there's a VR enabled. Uh, so you can check for virtual reality, uh, touch enable, so see if someone is using a mobile device or a touch screen, things like that. And it has all the functions here and events. Now the events that we want is input began. When you click on it, it'll show up right here. Now when you uh, get to this page, it'll show the, f the event right here. And then inside the parentheses, it'll show the the um, variables that it'll pass or the parameters. And so the first one that shows is the input, and the second one is game processed event. I'm not exactly sure what that does. I guess it's uh, showing that the game processed it. I don't know. But all we need for this is the input object, which is input right here. So uh, once you get into Studio click on a base plate and then wait for it to load. I don't know what mine's doing here. here I'm, gonna I'm gonna restart it because mine's freezing up or something. <coughs> I'll be back in a second when it loads up. Oh, never mind, it already did. <laughs> Alright, so another thing, just like in the last tutorial I showed you about keyboard input, user input service has to be done in a local script as well. So in the starter pack, let's go to advanced objects and then open up a local script. Now in the last way I showed you how to do it, you had to get the player's mouse you had to get the player's mouse and do mouse dot key down and stuff. That is not a good way to do it anymore. This way is way better uh, than the last way to do it. Now what you need to do is you need to get the service first. So to do that you need to uh, declare it as a variable. I should, I should declare it as UIS, short for user input service. And so after we type that in, we need to equals, I mean to do game, which is where all the services are contained. And we use the function get service. And then with parentheses. And inside this parentheses is a string. And so then here we need to type in user input service. And so, just as a declaration, uh, just to tell you, um, this is detecting the input of the local player to the local script. So, the player this local script is attached to, that's who it's detecting input from. When I first got started with user input service, I was a little bit confused about that for a second. So, just in case anyone else has those kind of confusions, uh, I'm going to tell you guys too. So, to detect an input from keyboard, we do UIS dot input began. And we need to connect to a function. And all we, the only parameter we need is the input, which is the it returns the input object, which is the thing that we're using to communicate with the game. So in this instance, going to be the keyboard. That's the input object. And so we're going to do an if statement so we can. Uh, well, actually, I'm just going to print what key is pressed. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the command print, and then input dot key code. Now what this is going to do is it's going to return an enum. An enum is short for the word enumeration and that means uh, it's like a, a word or something that stands for a certain value. So uh, I'll show you what, it, what it's going to look like when you print when you do it. So we got to do play solo. There. So here's what it did in the output. Uh, in here, it said it prints out enum.keycode.unknown. What this means is that 
it got it, I know that there was some kind of input but the what I did was unknown there was no key code for that because I used the mouse that's not what we're trying to detect here why is it so laggy all right but now if I press a key like one of these things see it shows a bunch of keys down there so if I zoom in it shows enum.keycode.sdwasd the, the after the enum.keycode thing it will show what key that I pressed so let's press stop and then we'll go back here so now that we know how what to what to look for we can do if statements with it so let's say if input dot key code equals enum dot key code dot let's see how about e then print the e key actually let's do it the e key was pressed there so now let's press play now press any other key nothing happens but if I press E and the output right here it says the E key was pressed oops sorry about that and so you can do that with any other key and there's lots of other enums not just for uh, uh, key codes but for a bunch of things I like after you type in the enum you can type in the kind of enum that it is. There's like AA samples, animation priority, bin type, axis. There's tons of different types of enums. But we're using key code. And we can do whatever key you want. And so um, one good thing about input user input servers is that you can detect the, the presses of different keys that you couldn't do, at least couldn't do very easily with the old deprecated method. Like, if you're gonna do the function keys, those those I don't think you could detect presses at all, unless you use some kind of like special byte thing or something like that. So I'm not gonna go into because you don't need to. But you can do the shift key, like left shift. You can do space. Uh, let's see, let's try the F11 keys. F1 it goes all the way through F12, F15, which my keyboard does not even have. Um, I think there's even escape, right? Yeah, there's even the escape key. And there's tab, there's everything on the keyboard. There's tons of stuff. And so another um, event that we're going to be using is the input ended event. So user input service dot input ended connect function and input and so this works the exact same way as this thing does here it'll you can do this the same if statements like if input dot key code equals input dot key code dot e it'll do the same thing this is just except this time it is detecting what the key that was not pressed so we can do if input dot key code equals enum dot key code dot e then this time we're gonna print the e key was released there we go now when we hold down the e key it says the e key was pressed Oops. Now if I let go of it, E key was released. Now you can obviously, there's a lot of things you can do with this. One example that I can show you right now is uh, like a sprint button. Normally the button you press for that is left shift, so that's what I'm going to use. So what we're going to do is, let's get rid of the print, we don't need that anymore. If enum.keycode equals enum.keycode.left shift then what we're gonna do up here we're gonna make a variable called player that equals game dot players dot local player and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reference the character so we're gonna do char short for that because I don't want to type in character every time I want to use it uh, we're gonna do char dot 
equals workspace wait for child player dot name. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to sign it's going the script's gonna look in the workspace and it's gonna wait for the child uh it's gonna wait for the player's character. So what it's more specifically doing is it looking for anything that has the player's name uh on it. And so what wait for child does is that it keeps repeat it's it keeps repeating this command right here until it finds uh the player's character. So nothing else on here is going to happen until it finds whatever this thing is. So now what we need to do is we need to go into the player's the character's humanoid. So char dot humanoid dot walk speed equals and whatever it wants whatever you want to set it to be. The default walk speed is uh, 16. That's just the normal walk speed that you have whenever you join a regular game. So let's change it to 30. The humanoid, by the way, the humanoid governs uh, a bunch of stuff about the character. It governs how much health it has, the maximum amount of health you can have. It manages how, like your jump power, like how high you can jump, and your and your walk speed, and a bunch of other stuff. But we can go in more into humanoid later. So what it's going to do now is that when input when the input begins, and when the we when the player presses left shift, the character's walk speed is going to go to 30. And so now we're going to change it here. So when they release the left shift key, we're going to it's going to reset the humanoid so walk speed to 16. There we go. Oh, my computer's slow. I think my dad has something going on. All right, let's press play. Rid of that. I right, sorry for how laggy. It's like, I think my dad's running some antivirus thing that's going on forever because there's so many files on here. All right. So, right now we're walking at normal speed. Now I want to press shift. See the animation speeds up, and so does my character. To make it easier to see, uh, let's change up the base plate a bit. Let's do, let's see where is it, grass. We're going to make it green. Right, that'll be a bit easier to see movement. Alright, hold shift. See we speed up now. Then we'll let go of it. We slow down. There's tons of other things you could use this kind of input for. Like let's say you're making, s you're like, you're making some kind of like custom character or something. You could bind the movements of the character to these keys right here. Or maybe you're making a gun. Uh, you could make it so when the pr player presses the R key, it'll reload the player's mag or something like that. So that's all I have for you guys today for user input service. Some other time we'll, g we'll go in more in depth in that on some of the more advanced things that you can do. Like, uh... Like touching, like detecting touch on like a mobile device or some or anything with a touch screen, and things like that. So I hope you guys like this video. I am sorry for taking for being gone for so long, uh, but if you like this video, please thumbs up and subscribe, and tell any other friends that about uh, this channel and the videos on it if they ever want to learn how to script on Roblox 2 post any questions or comments you have in the comments section down below and I will see you guys later